Pine Grove today released version 7.3 of their flagship visual web editor. Aside from the usual bug fixes, they introduced an exciting new interface for managing Tailwind classes, and they continue to refine the way the AI Assistant works. In this video, I'm going to briefly walk you through the changes and give you my initial impressions. Let's start with some small changes that they made to the visual Tailwind controls. Here in Pine Grove, I have a sample project loaded, and if you've used Tailwind before, you're kind of familiar with this interface. In the right hand panel, we have the visual Tailwind control editor, and you can see that we're scrolling down, we've got a lot of controls. The thing about Tailwind is that they have hundreds of classes, so it can get very overwhelming very easily. Pinegrow decided that they're going to take some of the less used controls and move them into subsections. For example, here in the text area, we've got a subsection for decoration and a subsection for advanced that has things like indent, letter spacing, variance, smoothing, etc. These are things that you're not going to be using all the time, so it is kind of nice that they're hidden away, but they're there if you need them. Now these Tailwind visual controls are great when you're learning your way around Tailwind, but if you already know what you're looking for, this can be a bit of a hassle trying to navigate through it, scrolling all over the place, and you just want something a little bit faster. Well, that's where the new class tree inspector comes into play. This is a brand new feature and I've never seen anything like it except for inside of Pine Grow. Let's show you what it is. All I have to do to open up the new inspector is to push the S button. That gives me a floating panel. What we're looking at here is a tree view of the classes that are in the element that's selected, as well as all the elements above it. This is a great way to quickly see what's applied to the element that you're looking at. Let's say for example, that we wanna change this text right here. All I have to do is select the element either in the canvas or in the tree view. And I see all the tailwind properties over here in the class tree. Just like with the visual tool, I can click on any of these and make changes that we see in real time. I can add new classes just by clicking this add class button and either looking for the class that I need in the drop down list or by searching for it in the text box. I can also very quickly see what's applied at which breakpoint. So at a glance, I can see that these are the classes that are applied on all breakpoints. These are the classes that are applied at the medium breakpoint and these are applied at the large breakpoint. And if it's inheriting any properties, I can also see that right here from the tree, because as I scroll down, I'm seeing all of its parent elements. Now this floating panel is one thing, but it can kind of get in the way. So instead of using it, you can also choose to click on this button right here and replace the visual control panel with the class tree panel. And now we don't have to worry about it floating around and you can use it right from here. I've only had a chance to play around with this for a little while, and it is definitely going to take some getting used to, but I can already see how this is going to speed up my workflow. Now let's take a look at some of the new AI tools. I'm going to create a new Tailwind page. If you've used Pine Grove's AI Assistant in the past, you know that the forward slash key used to open a floating panel. Now instead of doing that, it brings you to a dock panel. A lot of the controls are still the same, and if you're not familiar with how to use this, I would definitely recommend going onto pinegrow.com and clicking on Introducing the AI Assistant to read through all the features and how to use them. There's a lot going on here, and this tutorial really does teach you the best way to use the AI Assistant inside of Pinegrow without fumbling around. One of the new features in the AI Assistant is that you now have access to GPT-4 if your account is enabled for it. Mine isn't yet, so I'm still stuck on version 3.5. From what I understand, version 4 is a lot faster and a lot more accurate, but version 3.5 is still pretty good. I'm going to try adding a few sections using AI just so that we can see what it's going to be like. So instead of transforming the existing section, I want to click on this and say insert a new element. And I'm going to create a hero section for a dog sitting company called Smelly Dog. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and refine this a little bit. So I'm going to say, but I want to change the layout and content. And I'm going to select this section that we're going to mess with. And I want to add a learn more button. And I want to make the button square. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Let's go ahead and add another section. So I'll come back here to the top. And we'll insert a new element. And this I don't really like quite as much. It just doesn't do anything for me. So instead of this layout, we're going to transform this. And I'm not liking that at all. So let's just remove this whole thing. 
time, let's just insert a section right below our hero. Instead of making an about us section, we'll make a services section for the Smelly Dog Company website. And again, it's not going to win any awards, but it's definitely a starting point. One of the cool things that you can do is instead of having it create elements, you can chat with it. So we're going to come in here and say, just chatting. And now we're going to create a design brief for Smelly Dog. All right, now it's given us a lot of text here. So it has the overview, target audience, objectives, timeline, and budget. This is a lot of really cool stuff. So I'm going to take this whole design brief, copy it. I'm going to put it into my project brief here inside the AI assistant settings. Now this project brief is actually stored inside of your project. So this isn't going to show up everywhere. Uh, for each new project, you're going to get a new project brief. And now for everything that I put in here, it's going to use that project brief as a starting point. So now that I've done that, let's delete our services section and I'm going to have it create another service section for us. So we'll insert a new element, make a service section for the Smelly Dog Company website. And I've got body selected so that it inserts it in there. There we go. Now that's a whole lot better. Now I can just come in here and rearrange this a little bit. And we definitely have the startings of a brand new website. Again, this thing's not going to win any awards, but it's pretty cool what AI can start to do. And you can see the difference that having the AI generate a design brief before we get started made to the project. Okay, so there's a lot to learn about the AI assistant. And once I have access to GPT-4, I'm going to do a video covering a lot more than I just did today. It's worth coming to the Pinegrow website and checking out the release notes for version 7.3, because it goes into a lot more detail about the new AI assistant panel and the class tree inspector for Tailwind. That's all for today, and as always, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment down below, and I'll see you next time.